Welcome to Meet the Archive Online. My name is Frank Roemen and I'm Director of Collections at I Film Museum. This year's edition of Meet the Archive will be different for two reasons. First of all, due to the pandemic, we will not present and perform on site. Instead, we will present a eight part series online. Second, the curators will not look back to all the restorations, preservations, presentations and all the research we did last year. Instead, we will celebrate our 75th birthday. I Film Museum exists this year 75 years. And the eye curators will zoom in to the history of 75 years. So I wish you a lot of fun with our online Meet the Archive. This is part seven. Although we work on different parts of the collection, our collective ambition is to understand and revalue the women's contribution to cinema. For various reasons, we believe that women have always been underrepresented or even maybe misrepresented through periods, geographies and genres. But on a positive note, we also would like to acknowledge that there are worldwide efforts being made recently to um, correct this history or these mistakes of history. For example, a lot of publications have been uh, made on uh, concentrating on women and several retrospectives uh, have seen the light focused on women like the Berlinale in 2020, uh, but also, for example, a retrospective of Barbara Hammer, which toured the world a few years ago and so on. So this is a positive trend that we want to acknowledge. It's a cultural change and we want to um, also consider the role and the responsibility of the archive being part of this culture change. Already for many years Eiffel Museum has been paying attention to women's work in cinema. In 1968 Shirley Clark was invited to Amsterdam to show her films. In 1973 there was a big Asta Nielsen exhibition together with Arnhem's museum. In 1990 Shoes by Louise Weber was found in the archive and restored for the first time and screened at the Giornata del Cinema Muto. In 1999, when Film Museum joined forces with Utrecht University to organize the first Women and the Silent Screen Festival, the film was shown and since then Shoes has become part of the curriculum for all the universities teaching women and cinema. In the 1990s, the Desmet collection also paved the way to the re-evaluation of Italian divas. Lida Borelli, Francesca Bertini were rediscovered through the so far lost films that came out of the Desmet collection, culminating in Peter Del Poet's work, Diva Dolorosa. In the last 20 years, I has been paying even more attention to women's work in cinema regularly partnering with women and the silent scene conferences around the world, showing films from our collection, but also in our own cinemas with a program called Heldinen Heroines, curated by Giovanna Fossati in 2010. We have been constantly focusing on the work of forgotten women, leading us to discoveries of films by Rosa Porton, 
Lida Borelli, Olive Thomas and Mabel Norman. In the past couple of years, we have successfully reintroduced Filibus, not only showing the film around the world, but also finding out in the process that the actress playing Filibus was actually Valeria Creti, something that was not known for many decades. The key is to concentrate on identifying nitrate fragments. In order to be ahead of the nitrate decay and trying to recover as much as possible from what is left. We noticed that the past policies of film museum to restore even unidentified fragments just based on the spectacular action that was seen, has over the years created a treasure trove for the researchers who are now encouraged to tackle the careers of forgotten actresses in the silent cinema. One recent discovery is the film Freiheit oder Tod, starring Wanda Treumann from 1912. This film had been preserved in fragment, the only existing fragment in the world of five minutes, because of its showing spectacular action, not because Wanda Troyman was recognized at the time. Only recently, thanks to Dr. Robert Kiss, we now know what this film is. Wanda Troyman was a German actress who was active in, from 1910 to 1922. And in these years, she made over 100 films. Of these 100 films, only seven are known to exist today in the FIAF archives and three of which were already found in Amsterdam and preserved by I Film Museum. This fragment is the fourth film that we have with Wanda Troyman.
The IFI Museum commitment to women's films has seen an intensification in the past two decades, which translates into an active policy with regards to acquisition, research, preservation and presentation. From the point of view of experimental film, uh, what I can say is that which differs from the silent film is that we have to really treasure a collaboration with living filmmakers, some of them still making uh, films. But surprisingly, the fact that these women or filmmakers are still making films does not really mean that these films are better preserved than the films of the silent period. On the contrary, in my experience, what I noticed is that a lot of these films were really actually kept not in good conditions and that therefore um, they are actually at risk of being um, yeah, um, degrading or at times even forgotten, sometimes by the filmmakers themselves. So what is really important here uh, with dealing with um, living filmmakers is to enter a conversation and to uh, act on time because uh, some of these films were made even in very precarious uh, conditions like using out-of-date uh, stocks, sometimes using uh, very um, low-budget formats like uh, Super 8 or video formats like Mini DV or I8, some of whom are not even readable uh, anymore uh, nowadays unless you have a proper equipment. And what is important as well is the knowledge and specialized knowledge on dealing with the preservation of experimental film. So altogether, um, let's say the fact that we are dealing with uh, experimental films, films made for example in the post-war period from the 50s, 60s on, does not necessarily translate into the fact that these films have been preserved. It is thanks to this active policy in reaching out to filmmakers that quite some important collections have entered the Film Museum in the past years. And I want to mention just a few of them because they are representative of a trend that I am trying to uh, set forth. For example, um, film the founding members of the um, Artist Run Lab uh, Filmwerkplatz in, in Rotterdam, uh, they are quite well represented at the moment in our collection. To start with the founding member Esther Urlus, of course, but then also moving to uh, Francine van Everdinge and to one of the latest uh, generation of filmmakers which is going to enter our collection, which is Lee Chun Seng. Um, another way that the Film Museum is showing its commitment to promote the work of women is by um, curating uh, distribution programs that are meant to be uh, basically hired from and, and relate in festivals or, or other places. Um, I would like to highlight a couple of them, which is also which are good examples of a collaboration that we initiated with external partners. Uh, the first one is called Found Sounds, which is a retrospective dedicated to the work of Barbara Mater. This retrospective was uh, curated by Monica Saviron uh, together with us and uh, um, it toured actually the world for a couple of years. Um, another one, um, the latest uh, endeavor that we have uh, organized is called uh, This Quiet American and it's a program dedicated to the work and of um, filmmaker and animator Martha Colburn. This program has been co-curated by Marius Hurdy and this program was actually supposed to premiere at an Ann Arbor Film Festival in 2020 but yeah, then the pandemic took over and actually is a program that is still awaiting its international premiere. Based on our conviction that women's visibility is key to understand their contribution to films, we have also decided to take part in the Wikipedia activities, initially organized by Atria, the Library of Women in Amsterdam. Our main goal in initially was to 
learn how to edit Wikipedia and to organize such a writing event in our own library, iStudy. As we dove into the wiki world, we found out many other things. Not only we learned how to add people, but we noticed how big differences there were between different language uh, parts of Wikipedia. For example, many actresses, filmmakers who were present in the English Wikipedia did not even exist at all in other languages. The Dutch Wikipedia didn't even carry some of the major Dutch female filmmakers. Inspired by this, we decided to organize some writing events ourselves. By that time, the pandemic was there, and since everybody was at home, we carried our activities online. Initially, we gave online trainings to other I employees, teaching them how to write people into Wikipedia, and eventually we also went for a larger audience of colleagues internationally and so, uh, students and scholars or basically anybody who wants to join us and to learn how to write into Wikipedia in their own languages. In the summer of 2020, we were able to add many people to Wikipedia. For example, Barbara Meter, Tsuru Aoki, Haide Chikli Tamzali were, were all added to Dutch Wikipedia. One example of obscure actresses in Wikipedia is Sarah Duhamel. This French actress only existed in two language versions, in the French and German. And interestingly, the German entry for her was by far superior to the French one, also referring to the source of Gallica, a French database that was not present in the French entry for her. Over the summer of 2020, we also added Sarah Duhamel to the Dutch Wikipedia, and a month later, we also added her to the English Wikipedia. While working on the Wikipedia project, we noticed that Germaine Dulac was not present in the Dutch Wikipedia. She's very important to our collection as being one of the film Liga uh, directors, and we have already preserved her film Coquille le clergyman. But not only that, very recently we also discovered fragments of her lost serial film, Am de Fou. This then got attention at the Cinema di Srovato and International Film Festival Rotterdam. So noticing that she was not even present at all in the Dutch Wikipedia was a big miss for us, which we have now by now recovered and introduced. Based on our experience with Wikipedia project, we have now the ambition to go on, inspired also by the Women in Red project by Wikipedia, but also to think about how in the future we can exchange our expertise, knowledge and holdings with the Wiki community. All these examples actually show that joining forces with others uh, is the, really the way to go in order to achieve some concrete results when you want to tackle the visibility of women in film. 